Welcome everyone to our code to read podcast. This time we're gonna have a free free on Lazar Factory, sent in by Tom's Bizarre Adventure. His allies are going to be obviously he's playing as the Americans as you can see. Uh, his allies are going to be SWAT playing as British and Nikojo Italy playing as British as well. And on the enemy team we're gonna have Hotman Yeti playing as the OKW, Braised Pork, mm, yummy, uh, playing as the Wehrmacht, and Moonstars Turkey playing as the OKW. Lazar Factory, let's talk a little bit about it. We have a pretty big sort of separating line with this uh, railway line in the center with the bridges. Obviously, this is what this map is famous for and why a lot of people don't kind of dislike this map because there's a lot of choke points uh, that kind of separate both sides of the map. And it's not very fun sometimes to get uh, bottled up into one of these areas and not have the ability to go forward and then it turns into an artillery duel and it's not very fun. So that's why a lot of people sometimes like to rush uh, in some areas of the map, but we will see if they, uh, if anyone decides to do that. The few points are in so a couple of pretty uh, easily defensible locations because of these cutoffs. The victory points are, th are a little bit more exposed, being on pretty much uh, the um, opposite side, right outside of the uh, cutoff. And also the one in the center is kind of easy to uh, harass because the choke point over here is not quite as sort of annoying as some of the other ones. Looks like we have the first engagement going to be going on the left side. Nikojo's infantry sections are actually trying to build a trench. I would not recommend to do this because obviously uh, the enemy can see you pretty easily when you're doing that. So the trench will get cancelled. No resources lost there. Obviously the trench for the British is 50 manpower. So always remember that. And you pay, that, you pay for that by uh, sort of having the ability to not have the trench stolen by the enemy. Only the British player can use that. Now... The Stern Pioneers will be able to easily, at close range, outgun the infantry sections, especially with the support of the Cuba Wagon. We have another engagement on the right side of the map. Some riflemen from Tom are actually trying to um, contest this victory point, but we have a Cuba Wagon, a Folk, and a Stern Pioneer repulsing them. And that's a very scary combination because the uh, Cuba Wagon can provide some good vehicle support, and the machine gun is a little bit. Uh, not, it's not the most effective thing against infantry, but it's not bad. And uh, then the Stern Pioneers can be good at close range, and the Folk Pioneers can be good at long range. So it's a pretty scary force to take on with just riflemen at the beginning. We have a mortar, though, out of Tom, which is definitely a good decision to try and deal with some damage to the uh, infantry and cover. Now, we have a bring here on the left side trying to advance, but it's not really working out because it's it's gotten itself in a pretty bad position. Easily flanked by the uh, OKW infantry, and also the Cuba Wagon coming in to cut it off from the north. This rank here is definitely going to die, even without the Panzerfaust being available. It just got itself into a terrible position and it's going to die. So that was a bit of a waste of manpower for the British. In fact, there is a machine gun over here trying to cover the fuel point, but it will get flanked by Braised Pork's infantry. Braised Pork managed to somehow get the control of the central VP, despite the fact that SWAT had some pretty good uh, grip on this area earlier on. Now, in fact... We see that uh, there is a mortar out for Braised Pork, so that would be pretty good at countering this Victor's um, heavy strategy that SWAT is going for. On the right side of the map, unfortunately, I was not able to cover this assault by Nick, uh, Joe. Joe, in fact, uh, oh, not Joe, sorry, Tom, <laughs> gonna fail a little bit of an assault on this position. As I said, the Stern Pioneers, along with the uh, Folk Stern Years, make for a pretty good combination. We have a fighting position out of Tom, which is definitely a good decision to protect his. Um, munitions point because he needs that munitions point under his control. Later on he will need to upgrade the bars and to have a lot of uh, ability to throw smoke grenades and the likes. So that would be pretty good for him. Also I feel like he's gonna go for heavy cavalry company because he's got a, a perching bulletin so having the extra um, munitions for the mines would be really good. Now the fighting position will be uh, coming on online pretty much just in time for the Storm Pioneers to get the brunt of the fighting from the uh, 50 cal. And so obviously these Star Pioneers will have to retreat pretty much instantly. In fact, this one... Oh, that was a little bit of a uh, unnecessary retreat, I feel like. Uh, he could have stayed there with the mortar and let the um, uh, the rear echelons shoot at the uh, Cuba Wagon. And probably that would have been enough to force back the Cuba Wagon and... I don't know. Though perhaps, since the Cuba Wagon is surviving this long, that was probably a safe decision to retreat the mortar. Anyways, he doesn't need the mortar. Uh, right now because he's made all of the German units retreat right now. In fact, the Cuba Wagon will take a terrible retreat path through the machine gun's arc of fire. Very lucky to escape. 
Honestly, uh, if he would have chased down the Kubowagen with your rifleman, I feel like the um, Kubowagen would have died because both the rifleman fire uh, coming in and the uh, extra sort of uh, line of sight provided to the machine gun. Because essentially what happened was at this line, the fighting position lost line of sight of the Kubowagen, so it stopped firing. But if the riflemen were chasing, then the machine gun would have been able to use all of its range to shoot at the cue ball, and it would have definitely died. But that's still good enough, repelling the assault. And right now, he can probably uh, sort of, once he's got the um, two reinforcing rifleman squads back, which they are coming in the field right now, he's going to be able to easily take this uh, victory point for himself. And that would be pretty important, because right now they are losing uh, on VPs. There is a triple cap going for the Germans. In fact, Race Bork is doing an excellent job with two mortars and two machine guns to hold the center. Right now, the British really need some kind of vehicle to counter this. In fact, the uh, SWAT, uh, SWAT over here is going for the Wasp Universal Carrier, which is obviously an excellent decision to counter something like support weapon spam. But he's sending it on over on the left side, where it's a little bit more uh, exposed to panzer, things like Panzerfausts, because right now, uh, Hartmann Yeti is going for the Battle Group Headquarters, and the Battle Group Headquarters, obviously, in a pretty ad aggressive location. I feel like over here would have been better, or perhaps even over here, uh, just in case he was going to fight a little more over here and uh, need a poor retreat point that could accommodate that kind of a uh, retreat path, but oh well. Um, so right now there is an ET gun coming up for uh, Tom, and I feel like that's a good decision because he does not know what the enemy is going for. In fact, right now Moonstar Turkey is definitely going for some kind of early vehicle with the mechanized regiment headquarters, so that AT gun early is an excellent decision. He really needs that right now, and in fact, his riflemen are doing a lot of damage to the Volkswagen so he does not need the extra anti infantry firepower. So, essentially, what he's gonna go for right now is um, probably some kind of early AT to uh, counter any kind of early vehicle, like this Luke's that uh, Moonstars is going for. And he's going to rely on his rifleman right now to uh, fight the German infantry, which is definitely going really well. Moonstars managed to lose a um, managed to lose a Volkswagen in your squad, which is obviously really bad. He's going to lose the veteran seat that came with that as well. He had a bet one squad, and now it's dead. Now on the left side, it looks like the British have managed to make a pretty good advance uh, against uh, Hotman Yeti. And right now he's got a trench set up. Of course, the Germans do have some incendiary grenades that they can throw against the trench, which would be very effective. Also, they've thrown an, uh, an incendiary grenade on the Bofors emplacement. Bofors emplacement might go down. In fact, it will go down before it sets up. And that was a little bit of a bad blow for Nikojo, because right now he really needed that Bofors. If he had gotten that Bofors up, he would have been able to just completely shut off the left side of the Germans. But as it stands right now, uh, it's still not going to be enough for Hoffman Yeni to come back into this game because he's lost a lot of troops, and so he's not uh, in any way uh, ready to force back um, the Americans from his side, or sorry, the British from his side. Now, the Americans on the right side are doing much better uh, against Moonstars than they were doing before. We have a bazooka from the captain. All three rifleman squads are VED-1, so they can use the anti-tank rifle grenade to damage the engine of the Lukes. Unfortunately, he sent in the captain uh, first. I feel like he should have kept the captain in reserve, and then sent in the riflemen to, um, to, to, to throw an anti-tank rifle grenade on the Lukes, because that would have kind of um, made it a little bit mm, a little bit more sort of willing to come forward and not be scared of the Captain Bazooka. Uh, in fact, the AT gun right now comes up from the rear. Excellent maximum range shot. Unfortunately, the Captain will go down. Kept it in the fight a little bit too much uh, against the Lukes' autocannon, and that was a bit of a... Uh, that was a bit of a bad loss for Tom. Now, he will be going for an ambulance, which means that soon enough, uh, if he can get an ambulance and he can get a major up, uh, he is going to be able to have a forward retreat point up to about here. And that would have been... Well, that will be really good, because then he will have a very close retreat point to the uh, actual fighting area. In fact, right now, he's going to send all his riflemen back to base when he's actually having his ambulance come up to the front, which is, I feel like, a mistake. He could have just waited for the ambulance to come up and reinforced from the ambulance and healed up from the ambulance as well. So I feel like that was a mistake. In fact, on the left side, we have a bit of the um, push from Braced Pork, and Braced Pork is doing really well. He's got two Grand Deer squads, two MGs, two Pioneers, and two Mortars. What he really needs right now is some kind of vehicle, and it looks like he will be going for that with a support armor core. He's got the uh, Spearhead Doctrine all set up, so he could go for a Mortar Half-Rack, but I feel like since he's got the support armor core, he will go for an Ostwind or a Panzer IV. Panzer IV would be excellent because it will be able to easily counter the Bofors that Nikojo went for. 
Nekujo managing to set up a Bofors and trying to push up on the left side a little bit. Uh, so it's doing a little bit of a uh, comeback from what he was doing before. Uh, he was having a little bit of trouble. But right now he really needs to help out his ally uh, SWAT in the center. Because really Brace Pork is doing a lot of damage to SWAT. Now, there is an AEC armored car on the field for the uh, British, but right now it's a little bit late to get out an AEC armored car. In fact, Brace Pork will soon have the ability to get... Oh, he's going to lose a Grand Year squad. That was not good. But he's going to have the ability to get a Panzer IV soon. So that means that essentially this AEC is not going to be that good. Now, we do see that the um, Lukes is attacking the uh, little fortified position of Tom. That is definitely not a good idea because the AT gun is here. AT gun managing to get a lot of shots off on the Lukes. And the Lukes will be forced to retreat. Mortar is still up. Uh, wasn't able to uh, destroy the mortar at all. In fact, these riflemen... Where's the ambulance? Oh, okay. Okay, I see what he's doing. It's a little bit of a sneaky move. I'm not sure as to the validity of this, but I kind of like it. Uh, it's very vulnerable if the Germans find out where it is. They can throw down some kind of artillery on it. For example, if Moonstar's TR decides to go for Scavenge Docker, he's going to have the 105 artillery barrage. Or even if he is Luftwaffe ground forces a... Actually, that's far away enough that the uh, Luftwaffe drop will not really affect it. So, yeah, pretty much only if he goes Scavenge Doctrine, he's going to have troubles. Or if there's a Stuka on the field, which is possible. I mean, Moonstar's going for an armored car right now is a... <laughs> the Puma is not exactly the best decision, I feel like. It's going to be pretty decent against the fighting positions, but with the AT guns, and I'm sorry if you can hear the uh, saw in the background, but... There's nothing I can do right now. Uh, they're doing some kind of stuff downstairs. Um, right now, there's actually a racket mover for, for Hobn and Yeni. And it's getting attack rounded. No, actually no, it's in line of sight. Wow, that's a lot of line of sight though. That is a ridiculous amount of line of sight. That's probably from the infantry inside. That's weird. So the cubo wagon is still alive from Moonstars. He could be doing doing some pretty good shit with that, aka okay, just capping around the map in um, areas that the uh, allies don't have any troops in. And now it's gonna die from the bazookas. So actually, um, Tom decided to go for a lot of bazookas on his riflemen. I feel like that is a mistake. He should have gone for bazookas on his rear echelons. He could have built a couple more rear echelons. They're pretty cheap, only 200 manpower. And then built uh, bazookas on that, and then gone for bars on his riflemen. I feel like that would have been better, uh, because right now he's going to need both anti-infantry and anti-vehicle. Great job taking out the Lukes. Lukes was not expecting the uh, volley of bazookas, and the volley will be able to easily destroy the Lukes. So, good play on that. Um, again, I still feel like bazookas on rear echelons would be better than on riflemen. But, hey, I've been proven wrong before. Um, actually, there is a bar. Never mind, really good. Uh, going for both a bazooka and a bar, looks like. So that's actually a pretty good build on both, uh, most of his riflemen, because he's going to be able to deal with both vehicles and infantry. And since only one of the two weapons actually shows up under the unit icon, that's actually really good, because it kind of... Um, well, it deceives the enemy a little bit. Uh, they think, oh, the, he's only got bazookas. You know, I can charge in with my Stern Pioneers. But no, there's also a bar, and so the Stern Pioneers get destroyed. So that's actually a very good thing that you can do with the Americans uh, that not a lot of people really uh, utilize because it's much easier sometimes to just sort of have specialized units. But it's still a viable thing to have um, both upgrades on your infantry squads. Now, there is a Panzer IV on the field for Brace Bork. He's going to have the um, CPs for a Tiger in uh, like 8. So that's very much um, far away. So having the Panzer IVs out for him is going to be really good to bridge the gap between his earlier units and the Tiger later on. So having the Panzer IV will be excellent to deal with this AEC armored car. AEC using the Panzer Tactician Smoke to uh, retreat, so good job there on the AEC's part. Uh, the Universal Carrier with the Wasp upgrade is actually still alive, and that's going to be really annoying for the machine guns. As you can see already, one machine gun going down for Race Pork. And that's going to be good for the British, however... Pushing up with a uh, Vickers machine gun like this is not a good idea, especially when there's a Panzer IV on the field. I feel like uh, the British are definitely lacking an AT, especially uh, SWAT, but also Nikojo. Uh, Nikojo does have an AT gun, so he could send that over to help out his ally, but right now, that would be kind of annoying uh, to sort of micro the AT gun to um, not die in this area, because there's not a lot of friendly units for the allies in the center, so having the AT gun secure on the left side of the map is just much easier for him. Now, he does have a lot of um, 
sort of a SimCity going going up. Obviously, he is the SimCity commander, so that's pretty fitting for him. However, I feel like right now he definitely needs to be watching out for some kind of artillery um, spam from the Amer uh, from the Germans. Hauptmann Yeni could uh, go for the Sturmtiger, which would be excellent against what he's doing. On the right side, we still see that the Americans are still holding the um, VP, but they're not pushing up for the um, fuel point. I feel like that's a mistake right now. Uh, if we can, uh, if Tom can actually kill these machine guns. If he can kill these MG34s, then he can pretty easily push into the uh, fuel area of the Germans. And that would be really good, because right now, the fuel area of the Allies is being uh, harassed a lot. And while Tom is doing really well on the right side, he needs to be a little bit more aggressive, because right now the Allies are losing overall, because of uh, Brave Pork is just doing really well. SWAT is getting completely demolished in the center, and that's kind of spilling over into the um, fuel point of the Allies. The fuel point is being harassed, and right now the Allies are not having as much of a resource income as the Germans. Well, right now they do have a little bit of a slightly more um, a slightly more fat resource income, but uh, that was not the case up until now. So right now they really need to sort of recover. And right now SWAT could have definitely just taken his MG and retreated, um, just to avoid Brace Pork just capturing every these um, Stern Pioneers or no, just these normal Pioneers. There is a Jackson, actually, from Tom. I'm not sure about the Jackson. Oh, Ashtuka is on the field, and that was exactly what I was afraid of for Tom. Thankfully, he hasn't found out about this, because that would be really bad for him. If he found out about that, the Ashtuka over here would be so glorious, and that would be not good for Tom to be under. But the Ashtuka was still pretty good, taking out a bit of the mortar, um, almost managing to take out the veterans on that. Taken out the AT gun and taken out the fighting position. Obviously, uh, the fighting position not exactly being the most important target, but taking it out is still pretty decent for the Germans. Now, at this point, I feel like Tom should have gone for a Sherman. And the reason I feel like he should have gone for a Sherman is because he knew that the enemy had a Puma, so he would not have enough fuel to get out a Panzer IV or a Panzer anytime soon, because that's 90 fuel for the Germans. Actually, 70. Wow. I thought it was 90. I got confused a little bit. Well, still a lot of fuel, um, so having the uh, Sherman out would have been better against the infantry that the Germans have. And right now, he does not need any more anti-tank because he's got so many bazookas on his riflemen, and he's got a 57mm anti-tank gun anyway, so... On a narrow front like this, that's enough to sort of um, hold the line against any kind of German vehicles. However, uh, it's still a prudent decision to go for a Jackson. A Jackson is never bad, honestly, for the Americans. So I can understand why he went for that. Now, he went for a new Rifleman squad, and I feel like that's a mistake. I feel like rebuilding his captain would have been a better decision. The captain at 320 is just slightly more expensive than the um, Rifleman at 280. So it's only 40 more manpower. And it does give you a little bit of a, a sort of... Mm, Utility in terms of it's got a Thompson, so it's got uh, the possibility of going really well into anti infantry if you can give them two bars. It can go into hand tank with the bazookas because you can get one bazooka uh, just automatically and then get the other one. And then you can have the on me ability and the supervised ability, and just in general, it can be pretty useful as a utility unit compared to the normal rifleman. Good dodge actually on the Stuka barrage, only dealing a little bit of damage to this one rifleman squad. This one rifleman squad can probably just get retreated. Unfortunately, he kind of um, fat-fingered and selected both units when he was retreating, but since the retreat path is so damn short, he's gonna have pretty much the advantage over here. And that's probably the reason why he's doing so well against uh, Moonstars, is because he's got the retreat path over here, so his infantry does, just does not have to walk very far. And actually, he will... Wow, I'm not sure why he decided to... It's probably a misclick. He de set up the Bajor, and now his infantry are going to go back all the way to the base. I'm not sure about that. In the center, we do have a pretty, big, a pretty good combination with the 6-pounder uh, anti-tank gun and the AC. AC obviously being good because of the aim shot, uh, rather the target tread, sorry, I uh, was thinking of the Puma. Um, the target tread obviously being really good at disabling enemy vehicles. Two Panzer IVs out for Brace Fork are really good, and they're going to be a lot of trouble for the British. SWAT does have four infantry squads, but they're not upgraded. And right now he's got 300 munitions, and I feel like a research weapon rack upgrade would be really good for him. On the left side, nothing really is happening. There's just a little bit of a SimCity war going on. The Germans are definitely losing that because, well, they're trying to fight SimCity against the might of SimCity, so they're gonna die eventually. 
Uh, and that's pretty good for the British because obviously that's a victory point under their belt that they're not going to lose. And right now the victory point situation is pretty much in favor of the Germans. So right now the Allies do kind of need that um, victory point advantage. And there is, there is in fact the Scavenge Doctrine coming on the field for Boonstars. He's going to go for an Ostwin, which means that he's going to have so long to go for any kind of bigger vehicles. Because he's used 100 fuel on a Stuka, 100 fuel on an Ostwin. Uh, and 70 fuel on a Puma, so that's already 270 fuel, then 65 on a Lux, no, 55 on a Lux, right? No, 65 on a Lux. So that's like 335 fuel. That could have been a King Tiger. <laughs> that could have been a King Tiger, literally, but, uh, well, obviously not, because the King Tiger also requires a little bit more of teching, um, a little more teching sort of expenses, but still. Ostwind will go down, and there is a scavenge artillery barrage going down. Obviously, since Moonstars has a huge amount of munitions, uh, the scavenge artillery will throw down a huge amount of shells, because, uh, remember, the scavenge artillery uh, just shoots much more sh uh, when you have, like, more munitions stockpiled. So, you have to be very careful when you're facing scavenge, especially when you know that the enemy hasn't been using too many abilities. Now, right now, uh, Moonstars has been using a lot of incendiary grenades, but still, incendiary grenades are pretty cheap. There is a Sherman on the field from Tom, and it's not on uh, High Explosive, which is, in my opinion, a mistake. I feel like High Explosive should really be the default uh, munitions for the Sherman. There is a cube wagon trying to do something on the right side, but right now, the Americans do have a pretty solid grip on the right side, if they can get their infantry back on the area. What they're really lacking right now is artillery, though, uh, and I feel like the Pershing is going to really be the uh, thing that decides the right side of the map, because right now Tom does not have the ability to get any kind of artillery. He was not, um, he did not have enough manpower to get pack howitzers, so he does not really have the ability to take out these machine guns. Uh, I feel like the Sherman, though, would be much more effective on his side of the map than on the left side of the map, because right now on the left side of the map, the main enemy are these two Panzer fours. In fact, there is a Comet over here that can deal with these Panzer fours much better than the Sherman can. Uh, actually, the Sherman will be trying to chase through the smoke, the Panzer Tetrician trying to uh, do some... Uh, maneuvers against the allied armor, but it looks like that will not be enough because the Panzer Force are going to die anyway from the Comet and the Sherman combo. Really good uh, from the allies. Going to take out the two Panzer Force. That would be a really bad blow for uh, Braised Fork. Really, really good. Almost actually running over all the Grand Ears, doing, well, almost the best move that he could have got done there, but unfortunately he will not be able to do that. On the right side, there is a Stuka barrage coming in. That would be, that could be very devastating against these Rifflemen. We'll go down on the mortar, and we'll go down on the Jackson, but actually missing it, so that was not exactly as bad as it could have been. There are a couple of machine guns over here, but uh, right now Tom does have quite a few uh, ways of putting down smoke. Actually, a Panzer Shrek will be picked up by this one Rifleman squad, so having both a Bazooka and a Panzer Shrek will make it a very, very scary squad for German vehicles. There is the uh, off-map smoke barrage coming down on the VP, and also the rifleman smoke is available for Tom, so he could definitely uh, make these um, make these MGs retreat. In fact, mortar smoke coming in as well. Really good play out of him, just to um, disrupt these machine guns as much as possible. Now, his Sherman is out of nowhere. Where is it? Oh, it's over here, just repairing. He's probably focusing a little bit on microing the side of the map. Right now the Jackson is not on prioritized vehicles, which is definitely a mistake. And I feel like the Germans should have, this, at this point, realized what is going on with this ambulance, but they're really not, and that's just giving Tom so much free reign to come back all the time and contest this VP. The VP situation is still not that good for the Allies, but since they have managed to get that really good fight over here against the Panzer IVs, they are pretty much um, completely superior in terms of units, so they can definitely... Um, sort of come back into the map control game and also get the VPs back under their control. And that would be really good for them in general because right now right now they're sort of securing their own late game. Now, on the left side, we do see that Hopman Yeti has gone for a Panzer IV and a Stuka. And I feel like that is a bad decision. He should have gone for a Panther because uh, right now he doesn't have a chance in hell of breaching this area. So having, just having the Stuka to continually pummel it is good enough. Eventually, he's going to be able to destroy all of the fortifications. But until then, he cannot really do much. So having the Panzer IV will not be as useful as having a Panther to counter the Comet. And right now, they definitely, the Germans definitely need something to counter the Comet. In fact, coming in from the rear with the Comet is a really good decision by SWAT, who was kind of losing earlier to some 
pretty much some of the same uh, maneuvers by Braised Pork, but now he's doing that against the enemy, and that's helping out Tom quite a bit. Uh, coming in with the um, Jackson. Jackson, unfortunately, going to miss the Puma. As you see what the Jackson does when it's on the move, it's really bad accuracy, so... Um, yeah, essentially, you just have to stand still with the Jackson, but it will go down. Sherman coming in still does not have high, high explosive loaded. I feel like that is a very big mistake. You should definitely use the smoke from the Sherman to uh, blind these Rakan Riffers. The Rakan Riffers will be able to take out the Sherman, so that's a bit of a shame. And in fact, the Jackson is in trouble as well because of the Panzerfaust coming in from these Vetri Volksfeldiers, but the Rifleman will be coming in along with the smoke from the mortar to uh, avoid a kill on the Jackson. In fact, good grenade coming in on the uh, machine gun. Jackson will still go down from the Rakan Riffers, which is a bit of a shame, but right now the Pershing is available for Tom, so he, I feel like he's going to have the ability to do that, and he does not really care for having the, the Jackson, as much as it would have been really good to have. He's going to have the Pershing, and right now the Germans don't really have any vehicles on the field, so he does not exactly need the Jackson either. Now, right now, Brace Fork has gone for the Tiger, and the Tiger is going to be inferior against the Pershing, but with the Comet on the field, it's really going to be in trouble. It needs to be used against pretty much ex exclusively against infantry and in a very defensive way. Definitely not charging like this because, again, these are infantry sections, so they don't have any tank grenades. But right now, there is an American player nearby as well with bazookas and anti tank grenades. So this Tiger should be very, very scared of what is actually ahead. Uh, the bazooka is dealing a little bit of damage along with some kind of artillery coming down. I'm not sure as to what that is. Looks like a major RD? No, it's not a major RD. What is that? Is that a British artillery? Yeah, I feel like it was a British artillery from the artillery section. In fact, good flying coming in from the Comet, trying to run around the Tiger. There is a pack gun though uh, from Braised Pork, and the pack gun will be able to easily uh, protect the flank of the Tiger, along with uh, the AC, which got forced back by something. Uh, definitely not. Uh, in its element in such a big fight, the AC definitely wants to be in small engagements. We have a concentrated fire operation coming down from the British on the um, medical HQ, and so it's going to die because the concentrated fire operation is obviously the HQ killer, um, sort of, in essence, in effect, rip. Um, yeah, essentially, right now the Germans really need to regroup, and we need, really need to rebuild a force to counter the Allies. The Allies do have infantry superiority and vehicle superiority, so I feel like Going for sort of general purpose units is pretty much going to be their number one priority. So something like the Tiger is really good, but also I feel like a King Tiger would be excellent for the Germans right now. But um, for now, none of the German players are really close to a King Tiger. I mean, Hoffman Yeti is kind of halfway there uh, with all of the um, all the buildings uh, up. But right now, Moonstars really has wasted way too much um, of his manpower and fuel on his Ostwins, which haven't done anything. I mean, the Ostwins, you can get one. You can get two at most if you're really early on them, especially if you're Wehrmacht, but still, two is already too much. But three, especially this lane to game, is just suicide. So I feel like Moonstars has really kind of lost the game for the Germans. Like, he should have definitely gone for some kind of tier 4 vehicles, should have gone for the King Tiger, but he didn't, and I feel like that was really bad for the Germans. We have a little bit of an attempt by uh, Braised Pork to actually sort of shore up the right side, but it's not going to be enough. I mean, right now the Germans are completely uh, trouble capped, and so they have a few minutes left of um, BP time. And I feel like it's not going to be enough. They have four minutes left, and it's just not enough. Because right now they need more than 4 minutes to actually rebuild their forces. In fact, Comet and Pershing are going to come in, destroy the Tiger, and that's going to be pretty much GG. So I'm just going to speed it up. Pershing actually showing the rear armor, not exactly the best decision, but there isn't really that much AT available to stop it, along with the uh, British infantry coming in. We have a little bit of a push on the left side by um, Hopman Yeti, but it will not be enough. Hopman Yeti, in fact, going for the Fortifications Doctrine. He could have gone for a LEFH, which would have been really good against these... British defenses, but he decided to not do that and just instead, I don't know, get a few Rockettenwerfers. I feel like it was a bit of a weird weird decision to go for the fortifications and not go for the artillery piece, because the artillery piece will be really useful to defeat the um, British emplacements, but he decided to not do that. He went for the Stuka, the Stuka did not really do much, um, 
fact, what happened to the Stuka from Braised Poor? Um, sorry, Moonstars. I'm really not sure. And he's gone for a fourth Ostwind. What the hell? Well, that's that's it. So I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. And I'll see you soon. Well, actually, let's talk a little bit about. Um, well, no, I pretty much already talked about the mistakes, though. Yeah, I feel like I've pretty much talked about the mistakes already. A few points on the Allies uh, play. I feel like that 4th Rifleman squad was a little bit of a mistake from Tom Bizarre Adventure. Um, if you're going to go for a Captain and you're going to go for 4 Rifleman squads, you want to do it early, not in the sort of mid-game. So I feel like he could have not used uh, 280 Manpower on a Rifleman. He, he could have used the 280 Manpower on something else like a Pack Howitzer or a second AT Gun. Or... Uh, just rebuilding his captain. Uh, this is definitely risky. Um, if he would have, uh, if Moonstars would have found out and stuck at it, it would have been really, really devastating. I feel like this position would have been a little bit more safe, or even better, this position, because you have a little bit more room to just sort of dodge the Stuka strike if it's coming on this way. And then, well, that's pretty much it. So yeah, I'll see you soon, and see you.